Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new filter drawer on the market. This is the iDAS 8042DS. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I love iDAS filters. In fact, I have an entire drawer full of all their filters. And one thing I like about iDAS as a company is they're always trying to innovate. They're never really quite satisfied with how things are on the market, it seems like, and they're constantly trying to make things better for astronomers and astrophotographers, which I really like. So when they reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to review their new filter drawer, I said, yeah, absolutely, go ahead and send it over to me and I'll check it out. So I've been using this for a few weeks now and I could say it is a pretty cool filter drawer. So let's go ahead and talk about what makes this unique. Now what's cool about the AD42 is it's probably one of the few filter drawers on the market that has a rotator that actually works well. So it's tapered here and what you do is you just unscrew these three thumb screws And this piece comes out and it's M42 threaded, female, so this is going to attach to most cameras that just have that standard M42 male thread on the flange. Um, and, and then this is just going to sit flush in the filter drawer. And it's going to really lock in nicely with the thumb screws. And then if you need to change your camera's orientation throughout the night, you can just lightly unscrew those and this whole piece will move around and then you can just screw them back in and it actually works really well. The other thing I really like about this filter drawer is the filters themselves. So they're actually kind of spring loaded on these little trays and so when you slide them into this slot, they actually snap in really tightly and that's going to prevent light leaking through the filter into your imaging train. So these just pop right in. This is a clear glass filter as you can tell. And once I've done that, you can see that that snapped in nicely and there's no uh, light leakage at all. These uh, edges are actually oversized, so they really cover that gap really nicely. So the filters are designed well also. So that's kind of what makes the AD42 filter drawer unique is you get that unique taper for rotating your camera. And you also get these filter sliders that really kind of lock in nicely. Now real briefly, I just want to mention the filters that are going to be offered in this DS style format. Uh, first you have the HEUIB2, I like to call this the HEUIB2. What's really cool about this filter is it's like a UV IR cut filter, but it still allows in the hydrogen alpha band. So again, just kind of cool ingenuity from IDAS on this filter. Uh, the next filter that's going to be offered is the NB1. This is like a standard hydrogen alpha oxygen 3 dual narrowband filter, except the band passes are a decent amount wider than, than is usual. So if you're not in like a lot of light pollution and you want more light, this would be a good filter for that. Next is the NGS1. This is uh, IDAS's Night Glow Suppression Filter. Uh, so this is kind of just like your, your standard city light, light pollution filter. It filters out a lot of the garbage and allows you to get a nice natural look at the night sky. A uh, clear filter, of course, so just a standard piece of glass that's pretty much offered with most companies' filter drawers, or at least I would hope so. So if you want just a clear piece of glass, you can go for that. And then lastly is the GNB. Now this filter deserves a review in and of itself. I have three different versions of this filter in, in different sizes. This is the uh, Galaxy and Nebula Booster filter. Super cool filter. Definitely check it out if you haven't. I plan to review this in the future. Um, so those are kind of a what is that, five? Yeah, five filters that are going to be offered with this filter drawer, at least at launch. Uh, one filter I'd love to see would be the NBZ2. As you know, the NBZ, I've reviewed pretty much every version of that filter. I love that filter, so I really hope they make it in this size because it'd just be really convenient to pop it in and pop it out. Now, just real quick, I wanted to talk about the filters themselves, starting with the box. Now, what's nice about this is IDAS actually lists what the substrate thickness and optical thickness is, so you can use that in your back focus calculations. And then looking at the filters themselves, they're a bit unique in their size. When I first got these, I was like, these look bigger than 31 millimeter filters, but they look smaller than 36 millimeters. So I emailed IDAS and Turns out I was right, the effective diameter of these filters is 34 millimeters, so kind of a unique size. Perfect for one inch or micro four thirds sensors. It might even work with APS-C sensors. It's something I'm gonna test in the future, and if they do work well, it would be a good alternate to two inch sensors that most people with one shot color cameras use for their APS-C style cameras. 
I know 36 millimeters is kind of the ideal, um, but if these worked out, they'd be a good alternative to that. So yeah, overall, just pretty interesting filters from the slider nature of them to the size of the glass itself. Obtaining the proper 55 millimeters of back focus with the AD42DS is pretty simple, and I'm going to demonstrate that using a ZWO ASI 183 MC Pro, a fairly typical deep sky camera. The telescope, telescope I'm using is the Founder Optics Draco 62, and I have a M48 camera adapter on here. So the first thing that I need to do is convert these M48 threads to the M42 threads because that's what the 8042 uses. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off my dust cap here. I'm going to install a ZWO M42 to M48 converter, and this is also going to give me 16 and a half millimeters of back focus. All right, there we go. So now I have 42 millimeter threads the rest of the way here. Next, I'm going to install a Celestron M42 spacer ring. This is a 12 millimeter thick ring and comes as part of their M42 spacer ring set. So I'll th thread this on. Now I should be at 28 and a half millimeters of back focus. At this point, I'm going to thread on the AD42DS. And this is 19.3 millimeters thick. So this should put me at 47.8 millimeters of back focus. Now before I put the camera on, I'm going to go ahead and take out the tapered ring. So I'm just going to loosen the thumb screws here. There we go. And then I'm going to remove the 11 millimeter spacer ring on my camera. Now these cameras with smaller sensors, they just have a sensor to flange distance of 6.5 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on this tapered ring and then go ahead and install that to the filter drawer. And you wanna make sure that it sits nice and flush. There we go. I can rotate that wherever I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my thumb rings here. And with that sensor to flange distance of 6.5 millimeters, I should be at 54.3 millimeters of total back focus now. Now you might be saying, hey, that's a little bit less than 55 millimeters, and that's okay because you actually want to go a little bit above 55 millimeters when you're using filters. If you haven't seen my episode of Back Focus 101 on how filters affect back focus, definitely check it out and you'll learn why you need to add a little bit extra back focus distance when you use filters. So to do that, I would just use little spacer rings and just add a spacer ring or two to your system depending on what filter you're using. And then you're right at that 55 millimeters or so of back focus. So yeah, pretty simple to get that proper back focus distance using the AD42DS. One concern you may have is with sag or tilt of the camera and not being parallel with the optics of the imaging system. And that's not really a concern as long as you install the camera right. So after you're done rotating, hold the whole thing together and make sure that it sits flush with the AD42 and then just simply screw down the thumb screws nice and tight. And then you don't have to worry about any sag or tilt or anything like that. Now one nice thing, if for some reason your thumb screws do loosen up, your camera's not just gonna simply fall out because of that tapered ring. Your thumb screws basically have to be loosened all the way in order for your camera to come out. So that's not really an issue that you have to worry about with the 8042, which is, which is pretty nice. So you'll notice I did these all the way in order to release the camera and then to put it back in, I'm just gonna make sure it sits flat and that's when I can tighten down my thumb screws. The AD42 filter drawer is also excellent for telescopes like Newtonian reflectors or Schmidt Cassegrains that typically don't have camera rotators built into them. And the other nice thing is it's pretty thin, so it doesn't take up a lot of your back focus requirements. So on this Newtonian, I can literally just screw this right on here with the 42 millimeter threads. Thread on my camera. Pop in a filter. And then I can rotate how I want it. It's 
squeeze it together and tighten everything down. So the filter drawer does have a lot of utility on lots of different types of telescopes. All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up this introduction to the IDAS AD42 DS filter drawer. As you can see from this image of M5, my corner stars are nice and tight, and I'm not dealing with any tilt issues with this 183 sensor. So I'm excited to test this with larger sensors and just really use, utilize the rotating camera system here. So really cool, innovative product from IDAS with excellent filter sliders that lock up nicely and prevent light leakage. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.